So, uh, we're here with Alan Steinfeld, who's going to give us a scientific understanding of radiation hormesis, as well as give us your own experience right. with it. Right. Well, when, I, when I've studied evolution and evolutionary theory, it goes back to uh, Darwinian theory. Darwin says that evolution occurs through gradual change, adaptive features within a species as the environment changes, the survival of the fittest or those with a more um, adaptable mechanism for the changing environment will survive and that's what they call the survival of the fittest. So species then according to Darwin change as these adaptations grow. But the truth is that's not how evolution occurs. Evolution is done by what they call a quantum leaps. There are no in-between species in the fossil records. There's no, nothing that's like half an elephant. There's nothing that, you know, there's nothing even related to an elephant. How did the elephant come? Of course, it's a mammal. It's related to others. But where do they call it punctuated evolution? So things, species seem to appear overnight, really. Do, and where does that come from? And but, Alan, that's not true about humans, is it? I mean, don't we come from monkeys? Yeah, but where's, we come from monkeys, but there's this punctuated evolution. So there's the monkey, and then suddenly there's another species, right? It's not like halfway. It's like suddenly there's a new species that's different Cro than the monkey. Cro-Magnum man is not in between monkey and but Homo sapiens? That's a theory. There's nothing in the fossil record that shows this gradual evolution. It's only what Stephen Jay Gould said, there's punctuated evolution. So there's a species, and then suddenly there's another species. So yes, there may be monkeys, and we're related to monkeys, but there's this next leap. There's sort of leaps, mm -hmm. leaps of evolution. I mean, what I'm getting at is that there's these leaps because of this cosmic radiation that's hitting the Earth at a time. There's, which causes mutations. Which causes good mutations. See, man-made radiation and all that causes bad mutations. Bad mutations do not evolve the species. Low-level, cosmic, natural radiation gives the cells impetus to change with the environment. And that's why we get these punctuated uh, leaps of evolution. Are you telling me that in using low-level ra radiation, we are actually bringing in upon ourselves the death of humankind and the birth of the next evolutionary species that's beyond human? Well, I mean, I'm, not exactly, <laughs> I'm not exactly saying that. But what I am saying is that this cosmic radiation that's affecting the environment is mutating us in a way that allows us spe all species to take a quantum leap forward into another level of, of their being. Well, I think you're not going to answer this question. Okay, I might It's do. the same question in a different way. Okay, please. What's the next leap? Oh, for after, humans? Yeah, after humans. Well, we're already seeing it. We're already seeing these really psychic children, these uh, kids with these activated brain capacities, these multitasking. ADD is not an illness. It's the next level of these children's development. It's this fast-paced moving that is stimulating greater brain awareness. It's, Whoa. Don't, don't, don't you agree? That the so, so with that theory, yeah. I mean, we don't even need that theory to know that with all the medication we're killing the children. Yes, but we but, have But to, we're really killing not just the children, but we're killing our own future. We're ki we're killing, by medicating the kids. Yes, we're killing the creative capacity of human beings to evolve. And these children are the next evolution of who we are. And they can't be taught in the old ways. It's too slow for them. So, of course, they have attention deficit disorder because there's nothing that's grabbing their attention. You know, so we need to change our whole educational system in order to adapt to our next phase of evolution. And we are. I mean, the Internet is a kind of global nervous system. It is an extension. Marshall McLuhan said technology is an extension of, of our senses. So here we have this global nervous system that's an extension of our own central nervous system. So we are evolving, but these, these bursts of cosmic radiation uh, created things like the Cambrian Evolution. You know what that is? Like suddenly, uh, for hundreds of millions of years, it was just plants and ferns. And suddenly, all of a sudden, there were flowers. 
that came from nowhere. Flowers burst on the scenes in a relatively short time, and no one knows why or where that came from. But I propose... I do. And <laughs> you do, and I do. No, but I propose, and I haven't checked this out, that if you check the fossil records, there are these cosmic bursts of radiation that mutate us in beneficial ways. And that's why I think um, this natural low-level radiation is part of our evolution and part of that stimulating our, our genes to mutate in, with the environment. And it's very important. Wow. And that's my theory that's, of cosmic evolution. That's based, fabulous. Theory. Based on low-level radiation. It's something also that this teacher Ramtha said. He said that strontium-90 actually mutates the brains to help create genius. Now, no one knew what he meant at the time, but uh, putting together what you're doing with uh, radiation and, hormesis... And strontium-90 is radioactive. It's radioactive. It's and, one of the elements that's radioactive. And I think somewhere in those dialogues it says that that can be used to create genius, to stimulate the genius factor mm -hmm. in people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how that actually works, but it's um, there's, there's something to natural radiation fields that uh, we, uh, give us a harmony with the earth. You see, we have to have this electromagnetic uh, circuit around our bodies in order to have a strong immune system. That's part of it, this electromagnetic frequency. That's why if you do qigong or yoga, particularly qigong, it builds up our electromagnetic field, which builds our immune system. And it's part of this that what you're doing with low-level radiation is feeding the electromagnetic field. It's kind of giving more fire, in, in my understanding, to this, this shield around us that protects us and insulates us and feeds us. Because we're an electromagnetic battery, just like the Earth, just like the dogs. <laughs> but the higher your thought process, the more the electromagnetic field generates until you can start to levitate because you've had such a high-intensity electromagnetic field that you can bounce, you know, balance the gravitational field. You know, there's these two forces in the universe, the, the inward force, the gravitational field, and the outward force in the electromagnetic field. Mm. So we have both stimulating in us and around us. But if we, if, but if we, if we um, bathe with these radiation stones and we absorb this into our system, I feel, from my own experience, it's giving us that natural protection of the earth itself. The earth's field, energy field, is carried in these stones. And, yes, I, I agree with you. And yeah. um, part of, I think, what's happened and why we've become radiation deficient hmm. is because when we walk on earth and walk barefoot on earth, and I mean on the ground, yeah. grass and dirt and sand, uh, and even water, um, that we absorb the energy from the earth and yes. part of what we're absorbing is the radiation and also the electromagnetic and also the gravitational and all of the energies that are right. around us. And um, so since we have so much, we're here in New York City and I look out and I see concrete everywhere. So there's only concrete and then there are the shoes. But concrete the, is earth, you know, it's, it's sand. Concrete, well, concrete is I mean, made it's, of it's, earth, it's, yes. It's natural in a way, yes. concrete. A wood on your floors is natural. Now, if they really wanted to be smart, then mm -hmm. what they would do is take all the sand from Brazil, from that black beach in Brazil, which is highly radioactive, mm -hmm. and they would make concrete. Why don't we build the first radioactive concrete house? Yes, we could do from the that. the sand in Brazil. Well, we, no, we could actually take it from nuclear waste. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> well, I don't know. You see, I think there's something about man-made radiation that does not seem to be helpful. I think it's harmful as opposed to natural radiation, which is, seems to be helpful. I mean, man-made is not good in my what do you think? Man uh, I think it remains to be seen, actually. I think what it's... What about all those people in Chernobyl who oh, died? Oh, you, you haven't read my book yet. I have not. It's not out. Oh, but no. But didn't I send it to you? It's only Thursday. No. <laughs> no. no, I sent you the you whole book. You sent me the whole book? Yes. Too? Oh, I'll have to read it. Yeah. You what do you say about Chernobyl? Well, for instance, um, I... Uh, spoke to Donald Lucky. Do you know who he is, Don Lucky? Don Lucky is credited as being the guy in radiation hormesis. He did the early research in this country. Okay. He's 92 years old. He sleeps with a radon rock 15 inches from his spleen every night. 
Why his spleen? Why his spleen? Because the spleen is where white blood cells are manufactured. Really? So it really is the beginning of the immune system. Ah. So he wants he wants to stimulate his immune system on a nightly basis. Wow. So um, he and and I also want to tell you that um, he spent some time in Japan. He's actually a samurai now, mm -hmm. and the beauty of Japan for him is that there's six radon spas there, and they have rooms that are painted mm -hmm. with radon paint. Wow. And people are feeling good there. Oh yeah, yeah. So what was all this negative stuff about radon and getting out of your house? Yeah, well, Chernobyl radon yeah, and uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And Three Mile Island. Yeah, it's all mess. So, so I, had people... a, I had a woman here the other day, and um, I was giving her a treatment with my pulse magnetic machine. Mm. And uh, she's Russian, and she's very sick. She should be dead, but she, her boyfriend is very devoted to her, and he's spending all kinds of money seeing holistic doctors, and she's mm. really getting well. And... Um, so I just wanted to get a sense of uh, what a typical Russian would say about Chernobyl. So, and I'd asked a few Russians in the past also, and they all said the same thing. And so she said, um, uh, oh, it was awful. Oh my God, it practically ruined my country. I wish I had a Russian accent so I could mm -hmm. imitate her. <laughs> um, and uh, I said, well, you know, what exactly happened? Because I know the truth. And which I'm going to tell you in a minute. Okay. And she said, um, "Oh, you know, the next generation. I mean, these babies were born, and there were babies with two heads, and babies oh. with legs. To, you know, no legs." And really? so I said, "How do you know that?" Yeah. Just like, how do you know? I don't know. What What's an analogy here? How do you know that they walked? What's away. How do you How do you know what's really happening with the banks? I right. mean, all you know is, is what, what they the media tell. is rep That's right. reporting to us. We don't really know what's going on. Right. So I said, "How do you know?" And she said, "I saw it." <laughs> and um. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go ahead. Hold Lily. Lily's famous. No, it's okay. It's I, okay. Jane just wanted to take care of the little dog she, for a second. I put her. I put her in the back. She's putting the dog in the back because... Tell us who the dog is. Oh. Well, that dog is famous. The dog should be called not Lily anymore, but Lazarus, because that's the dog that was raised from the dead. What do you mean it was raised from the dead? That's the Hormesis water dog. She, it was, it, she had only a couple of pounds, and she was dehydrated, and Jane was giving her... And that's the dog that came back with yeah. the Hormesis? Okay. Right. We're going to change your name going to back to Going back to Chernobyl. Yeah, so... so so just, you know, edit this. Yeah. So um, so I said, well, how do you know? Yeah. And she said, I saw it. And I said, wow, you saw a baby with two heads? And she said, uh, yeah. I said, you saw it in person? She said, oh, no, I saw it on TV. So the, all the Russians saw things on TV. The fact is, I think about 30 people died. From, uh, from the From the uh, immediate after effect. Of the radiation. Uh, the radiation. I think high, don't you think high level Absolutely. radiations are, are, are? Yeah, it kills can, you. Can, yeah, yeah, can kill you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then and medium radiation gives you cancer, and low radiation stimulates your immune system and makes you live longer and healthier. So what's? But but this was low level radiation. Aside from the initial, you know, blah blah, what happened, and the people that died from that, the the accident cleanup people. Mm -hmm. They're, they're fine. But how do you know the distinction between the medium level and the low level? What's well, that's that? the key. Well, that is the key because, you know, you but don't want to give people more. Yes, than and, and, and I, when I interviewed Don Lucky, I asked him that very question. Good. But um, I think it's really clear. There are three demarcations that are quite clear. Okay, what It's are very they? clear that an atomic bomb is high cool. level. Okay. It's very clear that a dental x-ray is medium level. Oh, it is? Because it's, it's not that clear. I don't know what... Is well, there a unit of measurement that you can go by, like, yeah, in... Yeah, millirems. Millirems. Yeah, there are about four different units of measurement, but J, for the purposes of being consistent, uses millirems. A dental, a dental uh, x-ray is kind of low to medium, low medium. You know, radiation treatment for cancer, it's not as much as an atomic bomb but you know it's it, so it's medium but stones stones are low level stones are low level and radon which is emitted by the, what is radon exactly radon is the gas that's emitted radioactivity radon. is just decay yes it's, but decay that means that things are shooting radio, off particles though isotopes isotopes right. that enter our bodies right 
that... Well, they enter your bodies in different ways depending on whether it's beta, gamma, or ah. alpha. So radon is what, then? Radon is a gas that is emitted with a radioactive decay process. And um, if, you if you're lucky enough to live in the reading prong area... Now, Where? I think the reading what? prong... What's that? Reading prong is uh, in Pennsylvania. Oh. And the man who did the research, Bernie Cohen, in fact, in his basement he had a radon eliminator system, mm -hmm. at, which, you know, was a big thing about it would eliminate 20, radon. 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago. You know, it was big business, and, yeah, they were measuring. In fact, I think a law was passed in New Jersey and Pennsylvania that you had to, for a house to be purchased, you had to have a radon reading, and if it was high, then there had to be a system in there to eliminate the radon. However, Bernie Cohen had one of these systems, uh -huh. and he started doing research, because he lives in Reading Prong, he lives in Pittsburgh, I think, which is, Reading, I think the reason why Reading Prong has so much, I, we should ask Bernie Cohen this, I think the reason why it has so much radon is because it's a big, there's a fault there, and so it's really a break in the crust of the earth where, um, you know the stuff Radio from the system. from the earth from the inside of the earth pops mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. and part of that is radiation so radon is the gas that's emitted from radiation radi but where's the radiation radioactive decay where's the radioactivity coming from in like new jersey Where, what's radioactive it's there? coming the radioactive rays come from two places when they're natural if they're not man-made. Where do they come from? They come from there, or they come from there. No, but they there meaning the where in the earth? This crack in the fault that they might be coming it's from? It's seeping up from the crust of the earth. Oh, so It can be in water. It can be, so a natural hot springs uh -huh. usually is radioactive. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, Most hot that's why we love hot springs. Yeah. And the sunlight probably has some radioactivity. And when I go like that, I'm not looking at God, I'm looking at the sky from the cosmos. But the sun the, itself, sunlight yes. itself probably has some... And the some. atmosphere rains down on us. And then when there's these high bursts of cosmic radiation, there's this favorable mutation in the genes. Well, yeah, this that, is, what, I, that's this is my theory. theory. Yeah. This is my, but radon is a gas, so if, how can, so stones have the ga these gases that's being admitted? Like you're saying this guy sleeps with a stone that admits radon gas? Well, he, he got that from a radon mine, so I have to presume that the stone was in the radon mine long enough that it absorbed the properties of the radon, and so he's called, he didn't call it a radon stone, mm. he called it a stone from a radon mine. But you realize this is a radical theory you're presenting, Jane Goldberg. I mean, people have been so conditioned to think radioactivity is awful and the worst thing, and you're saying, no, it's not bad, it's actually good for you. It's, uh, it's turned my conceptual world topsy-turvy. I have been kicked out of the best dentist office in the city because, you know, they would work on me for six months, you know, I'd be cleaned, and then I'd go back six months, and then finally they'd say, okay, well, you've been coming here for a year or two, and now it's time to have x-rays. And I'd say, no, I'm not happy. Well, I can't treat you if you want to have x-rays. So, I mean, I wouldn't have, I had a cavity, and I went to five dentists uh, before I could find somebody who would fill the cavity without having an x-ray. That's how phobic I was about radiation. But they use digital x-rays that are actually really low level now that you might just want to stand in front of the machine. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think sometimes you might want to. <laughs> no, but the low level dental. Yeah. dental. We, we're going to go get our little radiation fix from our local dentist. <laughs> no, but I think, you know... He's going to say, why are you coming here so ba much? Bathing with the stones, <laughs> sleeping with the stones... Making love to the stone. No. <laughs> Being good, having a part of well, your Well, the stones do improve your sex life, by the way. They, they do in which way? We, we just uh, interviewed Cher, who's La Casa's colon therapist, and um, she uses the pad, and she has really big fibroid tumors in her belly. She's uh -huh. had a lot of intestinal stuff, a lot of illness in her life. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, Freud said uh, biology is destiny. I mean, Cher just kind of got stuck with the body that had a lot of problems, but mm. she's cured herself of cancer and, you know, of, of uh, irritable bowel syndrome. So, so she's got these, these really big fibroids in her uterus, and she's been using the stones just a, the mud pack actually, just a mm. few, um, mm -hmm. couple of months, mm -hmm. and uh, she got her first period in two and a half years. 
Wow, how old about that? Is she in her 40s, 50s, uh, 30s? She's probably about 45. Wow. Um, but she had gone through menopause is the point. So you're saying... And Jay says that happens. He says... <laughs> Which is good. It's she, readjusting the hormones. She also system. only yes. uses it 20 or 30 minutes. What did Jay yeah. say? What were you going to laugh? What were you laughing at? Well, I was going to say what I said in the last tape. I was going to say that Jay, uh, he, you know, he says that you're sexual, that if, you're, if you've got a spouse, that, you know, your spouse is going to be really happy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's let's bring on the stones. <laughs> so uh, I know there's many different levels of stones that people are using, and that, that I have a big stone, one of yours. Now, what is that exactly? What's that good for? Those bigger well, stones. Well, that's the size of the stone is not what matters. It can be a big stone, but uh, not hot, or it can be a small stone. The hottest stones I have are only this big. Oh, really? Yeah. Can I see some of your hot rocks? Uh, <laughs> you can't because they're in New Jersey. Oh, uh, and what do you do with them? Well, I'm trying to um, create more radioactivity in my house uh, to uh, deal with the mold problem, actually. Oh, maybe we should, like, put the dust and paint them on the walls, yeah. like, make dust from it and paint yeah, them Yeah, we could, the... we could, uh, that would uh, be good. there are ten Japanese samurai that are coming to the mine in Boulder, mm -hmm. Montana. There's a radon mine there that has been in existence since the 1920s, and um, so they're coming to meet uh, the woman that owns the mine, yeah. and they're bringing their radioactive cream to show Wow. Them. So radioactivity is the wave of the future. You, I think we've hit on something that's really revolutionary. Well, the other thing, Alan, yes. is that it changed my whole philosophy about nuclear power. Oh, really? So yeah. you're pro-nuclear? I am now. You pro. are, but nuclear power creates high-level radiation. That's harmful. Um, what happened in Chernobyl can now happen here because we have safeguards. I don't think we have Three Mile Island. You... Three, nothing happened. Yes. No, what? nothing happened. People... There was no, no, there was no illness, nothing happened. And I don't know. We, I don't think radio, you, I don't When know you see this nuclear. DVD, you're going to see that we interview the guy who was hired to see how far down this uh, radioactive high-level stuff went into the earth. Three quarters of an inch. That's how far down. That's it still enough. I'd like to see if their wildlife was killed. No, I mean, yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't killed. In Chernobyl, in Chernobyl, there's a deer that was before Chernobyl. It was uh, almost extinct, and now it's all running all over the place. Really? Yeah. And the the area that they've cordoned off that nobody can go in, it's lush and verdant. It is. Yes. Yes. Something's not making sense here. I mean, so why... You're experiencing why, a new reality. I'm experiencing a new reality, as the camera person says. <laughs> but why does the media, what does the media benefit from giving radioactivity a bad name as opposed to what you're doing? Well, um... Because I think people can get seriously ill from radio. It, it's, a, it's a very complicated political question that I researched to Yeah, I'm interested in book. that. Um, and it started, the, there were a couple of things that happened. One is that radio, low-level radiation was very popular in the 20s and 30s in this country. And I talked about the cream. They had condoms made out of low-level radiation. Really? How do they yeah. make it out of, I mean... You can make anything out of it. By just sprinkling a little radiation dust on things? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So Maybe like, that's what Tinkerbell was using. <laughs> Absolutely. That's why Tinkerbell never got older. So wait, the radiation condoms would do what? Well, it was just <laughs> exposing an important member of your body to uh, anti-aging. So it's um, not just safe sex, it's great sex. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Alan? Sounds well. I, I'd be interested in trying one. <laughs> so try they, so they were making all of these water crocs and uh, corsets for women. I mean, everything you can think of they were making wow. out of radio. And what happened is that there were some people were overdosing. This one guy, like, drank see, water. You can that overdose, was, you see? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you, see, you, can, you, you can overdose with water. You can drink enough water that it'll kill you, too. Well, well how are these people overdosing, though? Well, he, he was drinking water, this guy. Radiation he, water. Yeah, and he drank uh, something like three million times what he should have been <laughs> drinking. So he got pretty sick. Um, so there were a couple of cases like that. And then there well, was heavy the... heavy detox, right? Well, it was a detox that killed him. Oh. Well, um, and, then, and then there was the bomb. And, you know, oh, the, bomb. the bomb was so right. destructive 
Um, you know, so many people were killed from it. And the scientists that were involved in creating it began to feel guilty and remorse. And um, they actually were the ones that started talking about let's control nuclear power. I see. And not, you know, it started as in a way, a way to um, uh, kind of kill the bomb mm. aspect mm. of it, but it kind of broadened over to nuclear power also. So, you know, so you listen to scientists. I mean, I believe scientists. And so mm -hmm. the scientists were, you know, Physicians for Social Responsibility, which is a group that I've spent money supporting, but they're very against radiation, nuclear power altogether. Well, I think, you know, we're in a new paradigm. I think as people, this becomes more acceptable, we'll start to get some positive results with this or some kind of results that will start to come out into the public if the media is allowed to share these uh, controversial results. Yeah, I think now the media is so hungry for anything new and different. And I think when my book comes out, which uh, we'll have it Monday, mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, if the right people read it, then I think there could be a lot of attention given to this now. Well, this is going to cre create quite a controversy, Jane Goldberg. It is, it is. It's very okay, exciting. so what I want for the documentary yeah. Is for you to um, give us your exp your personal. Well, when comment. I first started using the mud pack, it it's I think it started to clean out this. I think I had some intestinal parasites or something, and I felt like all this stuff moving in here in the intestinal area that I hadn't felt like move before. It actually made me a little constipated at first. And then I felt like it cleared stuff out, but I felt like there was some intestinal stuff that the mud pack definitely mm. affected right away in the first couple of weeks, and then it felt well, really clear. Well, if you'd had a colonic, then you might have actually seen things coming out, you know, because okay. well, the, the, uh, the colon therapist can detect those kind of things, parasites, worms. And then the hot rocks I find actually more... Um, energizing and rejuvenating than the green rocks for me. The, the hot rock that I had felt like I was just feeling more energy, more awake, more clear-minded. So, so by the hot rock, you mean my big rock? No, no, I had a little little hot rock that I think probably was hotter than... You mean like a, than, water, a water rock? Yeah, big, a bigger water rock. Uh -huh. like one of those handheld rocks that... I just, I just had a real great connection with that stone, and I felt, <laughs> and I felt like it was making me clearer, thinking clearer and sharper and more focused. And um, I think what Jay says, you, you, you have to keep cleaning the fungus and the candida out of your system. You, you can't let it come back. So there's times, a couple of other times, I felt like it came back, and then I started to flush it out again. And you just have to keep at it because, um, you know, we have to change our diet eventually to get rid of and reconstitute the good intestinal flora and the good bacteria that, that lives on our bodies. So I think this is a very good, um, it's a very good tool for reconstituting the body to its natural healthy state. So did you feel any other effects Teeth. in the body? What? Teeth. Teeth? Teeth? No. Uh, uh, just the clarity, the energy, more energy. Like since I've started using the stones, um, better digestion. Um, sleep. I somehow affected my sleep. I was able to sleep better. Before that, I was having a sort of insomnia, and since using these stones, it feels like I don't have the same kind of insomnia that I had. Really? I, I don't know how, what that's working on. It but didn't it, help my sleep at all. In it, fact, it. Uh, it deprived me of sleep. It because, did? Yeah. Because you had too much energy. But you already have a lot of energy. Well, because I was writing the books, so I was getting up at 4 in the morning every morning. But it really helped. I don't know. It just made my body more peaceful. Yeah. And the baths with the hot rocks were very energizing yeah. as well. And drinking the water, I somehow feel something too. So it's just a total purification. Mm -hmm. And thank you. It's been really mm -hmm. fun working with you and Paula Gloria and bringing this message out. We'll see. I think it's early, It's in its early phases, the radiation hormesis research. And I no, think, the research is not in The research well, is in its late phases. Well, this the, level of bringing it back into the public is, is in its early phases. This is what's in the early phases. Yes. Yeah. Um, the research it has been, been being done for over 100 years. And what does and the research say?